Hello YouTube! Hi, I'm Red Team Beaver, and today I'm bringing you my first ever recorded walkthrough of a machine. In this video, I will break into blue by Hack the Box, which is an easy rated machine and a very good first box for beginners. Because some people watching will be preparing for certain certifications, I will hack it using Metasploit and also show you how to hack it manually for those who want to practice the manual exploitation skills required. If one way or the other interests you more, feel free to follow the timestamps down in the description below. Otherwise, I do believe it is great to watch both ways of hacking it. One final note, from now on, I will try to publish one video a week, so do let me know in the comments below which machine you would like me to work on next. Thank you for watching, and I hope you will enjoy this walkthrough of Blue by Hack the Box. Alright, so first off, in order to facilitate hacking this machine, I will add its IP address to my host file. This way I can simply refer to the uh, alias I will give it, like in this case, blue.htb, instead of the old IP address. For example, I can ping blue.htb now, and this is actually going to ping the IP address that is assigned to this machine. So this is much easier for me to work with blue.htb instead of the old IP address. Now let's move on to the nmap scan. Alright, so... As always, I will start my animation process by running a head map scan. I do a dash sc for the standard scripts, dash sv to enumerate the versions, dash p dash to scan all ports, dash on to save the output into uh, the blue full file which is within the scan folder. Uh, I do the dash v for verbosity to see the results as they come, and finally I give the IP address. Now, in order to save some time, I have already ran this the scan and we can read the results here and coming from experience what is most interesting to us will be ports 445 and 139 which are the SMB ports or Samba. Now IMAP was very good to us and already gave us the version of SMB which we will use uh, later on and a quick note on uh, port 135 for RPC and also the rest of the ports well RPC usually uh, is not a way in in itself. It can be used to enumerate users, printers, groups, etc. However, I always try to go for the lowest hanging fruit first, and in this case, SMB is a much juicier target than RPC at the moment. So let's enumerate SMB and find a way to attack SMB. All right, let's move forward and enumerate SMB. Ignoring the version for now, let's take a look at the shares themselves and see if we can access any of them. So in order to look for shares, we can use the SMB client uh, tool, which is a very nice tool for anything SMB related. We do dash L to list the shares, then four backslashes with the IP address, and then two backslashes. We do so many backslashes because we need to escape the escape character, right? Next, press enter. Press enter when prompted for password to enter an empty string. And we actually get five shares uh, back. Two of them being non-standard, the share and the users. So let's see if we can connect to them. We use SMB client again, two forward slashes, blue.htb, then the share name, which in my case will for the first one will be share. Enter again. We can use there to see what's inside of it, and we see that there's nothing here. So we can simply quit and do the same thing for the second share, which is the user's share. Now, for in the user's shares, we actually see uh, an output. We see uh, stuff that's inside the share that we can access. However, it's default uh, stuff. Nothing too interesting is happening here. However, in some CTFs and some boxes, you can find credentials.txt. You can find ashes that are hosted inside an open share. So always take a look at what you can get from the shares uh, whenever you see uh, open shares. So if we don't get anything from the shares themselves, let's take a look at the version, right? And as previously mentioned, Nmap actually found the version for us. So let's just grab this version and Google it. Now, the first link is a Rapid7 link that links us to MS17-010 Eternal Blue. Eternal Blue is a very nice exploit, and we can probably guess this is the exploit we're going to need to use since the box is named Blue. So let's take a look at the first link which, as previously mentioned, is a Rapid7 link, which means this is Metasploit, which means there sometimes are modules linked to this exploit. And this is the case right now. But how can we validate that our SMB server is actually vulnerable? Well, we could just try and fire up the exploit, but there's also a better way to look and validate before firing anything, and it is to use the Nmap scripting engine. 
To do so, we use nmap dash dash script equals smb dash vuln with a wildcard star. So this is going to run all of the vulnerability scanner scripts for SMB. Then we provide the IP address. Now this can take some time. So let's wait and see. All right, so as we can see right here, uh, our SMB server that we just scanned is vulnerable to MS17-010 Eternal Blue has, we can see from this output. So with this in mind, let's move on to attacking SMB via Metasploit first. Exploitation via Metasploit is actually the easiest way to compromise this machine. We can fire up the console by typing MSF console. Once the console has been powered and that we can see the nice Haskey heart, uh, we can actually search for MS17-010 or we can search for Eternal Blue as well. Uh, we can see that the um, uh, first exploit is actually the one we want, which is uh, MS17-010 Eternal Blue SMB Remote Windows Kernel Pool Corruption. That's a mouthful, but all we need to do is use zero. Now, we've selected the module we want to use, and the default payload is fine for me, but if you want, you can use the command show payload to show all of the options you have. Now, let's type options and see what we need to enter. Let's get the terminal bigger. And just zoom a bit. All right. So we see that we don't have a har host yet, of course, because that's the IP address of our target, and but it is required. Port is also required, but it's already by default 445. SMB pass user are not required, so let's leave them empty. And the verify uh, fields are both set to true, so let's leave it like that. So we need to provide our host, and we also need to change the L host and L port uh, for something we want. L host will be our listening host, and L port will be our listening port. So first off, let's set our hosts to um, blue.htb. Next, we can set L host to our uh, Actabox IP address. How do you do that? Well, we can type if config, and we actually see that ton zero interface, this is my IP address. However, an easier way to set it up uh, properly would be to set L host, L host to ton zero. And this will basically translate the interface to the IP address it needs. Next, we don't have to do that, but I like to change my listening port to something more still, like 443, which is used for HTTPS. A final look at our options will actually show that everything is set up properly, and all we need to do now is either type run or exploit in order to start the hack. So I will do run. Now we can see Metasploit working for us. We can just sit back and wait, and hopefully get a shell back. And just like that, we see that we have a win happening and we have a metaprinter session open. Now we can use the get UID command to see what's our privilege on the system. And we can see that we are system on the target machine. System is the highest privilege you cannot have in uh, Windows. Now, once we are system, we can type shell in order to open an interactive shell within the uh, Windows uh, terminal itself. We can do a who am I to validate again we are, we are system. Now we can look for flags, which will be located in cd backslash users. Now we can do there, and we can see that there is administrator and Harris. Uh, the root flag will be located in the administrator's uh, desktop folder. And similarly, the user flag will be located in the uh, Harris desktop folder. Now, just like that, uh, we have fully compromised this box. Next, we'll try to hack it manually. All right, now as for the manual exploitation, uh, as you may notice, I actually did reset my machine just in case uh, anything broke in the initial exploit. So make sure to change your host files accordingly if you also did reset your machine. Now, with that being done, uh, we know that the machine of obviously is uh, vulnerable to Eternal Blue, and my favorite way to attack Eternal Blue is actually to use the MS17-010 um, 
GitHub repo by Elvio Jr. So this guy, he actually made a very, very nice um, repo with all the tools required to manually exploit Eternal Blue. So let's just grab his repo and clone it. All right, let's CD to it and let's list it. All right, so what we will use actually is send and execute.py. This script is the one that will send our payload to the target machine, execute it, and then we'll have our reverse shell back. We'll also use checker.py. Checker.py is the tool we'll use to um, find a name pipe, a valid name pipe in which we can exploit. So let's first run um, send and execute to see what it requires us to do. So Python 2, send and execute. As you can see, we need the IP address, obviously, we need a payload, that's our executable file. Port is optional, but we'll give it the port 445, and finally the pipe name. The pipe name, which can be found using checker, as mentioned. Oh. Let's look at the options first. As you can see, it only requires the IP, so let's do checker.py, blue.htb. Now, as you can see, uh, the output tells us that the target is not patched, which we already knew, but it also tells us that all of the name pipe it tested are, we don't have access to them, it's status access denied. So how do we fix that? Well, the reason why we have status access denied is actually because our script sent the um, login request to the SMB server with an empty string as username. So let's try to modify the username string from an empty string to the default guest account. Now, if we just do that, save it, and launch the checker again, you will see that we actually have OK status come back to us. So that's fine. Now we have valid name pipes we can use. So what we need to do, if we look again at the send and execute file, we do need a payload. So to generate a payload, I always use MSF Venom. And for a Windows target, I do dash P for payload, and I do the Windows slash x64. This will depend on your architecture, of course. And I do a stageless payload. A stageless payload is written like this. And a staged payload will be written like this. I will let you decide if you want to send a stageless or staged payload. This is not in the scope of this video right now to explain the differences. But in my case, I'm going to use a stageless payload. Next, we need to provide a hell host, which is going to be our listening host. And to do so, we need to find our ton0 IP address. Now, enter it. Then we need to provide a hell port, which is going to be 443 again for me. Dash F for file type, it's going to be an exe for Windows. And dash o will be the output name of the file, which I'll simply name it shell.exe. So let's let MSF Venom work, and then we should see a new um, executable file appear. And we can see it right here. So this is what we'll send to the target machine. Next, we need to obviously open a listener so we can get our... Um, so we can get a ping back. Like when we send a payload, this payload is going to try to connect back to our port 443, which we just uh, opened now. Now, all we need to do is actually attack the target machine. So Python 2, send and execute that by. Let's look at the options again. We see that we need the IP address, executable file, port, and pipe name. So let's start with the IP address, blue.htb. Executable file is going to be shell.exe. Then port will be 445. And finally, pipe name, we can use Samar, which we probably previously saw. Now, you see that we have an access denied. Why is that? Well, it's the same reason as before, right? We are currently trying to connect using an empty username string. So let's switch our username to guest again. And let's try again. Now we see it's connecting, it's sending stuff, it's a much better output to see. And if we actually go see our listener, we see that we have a shellback. And if we do who am I, we see that this time 
once more we are system. Congratulations, you just rooted blue manually. Thank you so much for watching this walkthrough of Blue by Hack the Box. I am aware there is a lot of room for improvement and will strive to always provide better quality videos for you. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to give this video a like. I will be posting one more video a week from now on, so make sure to subscribe to not miss anything. Let me know in the comments down below which machine you would like me to work on next. If you'd like to support me, check out my links in the description. Thank you for watching and have a good week.